Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about Wayne's Displacement Law. Wayne's Displacement Law is a fundamental law in thermal radiation that relates the temperature of a black body to the wavelength at which it emits radiation most strongly. Now let's take the example of an iron rod. Now the iron rod is not a perfect black body. But we can assume it to be behaving like a black body at a high temperature. So the moment you are increasing the temperature of this iron rod, you would see that the color of the iron rod is changing. So at this point in time, you would see the color is somehow orange. Now, Wayne's displacement law relates the temperature with the color or more precisely temperature and the wavelength. So before we understand what is Wayne's law in detail, let's first understand what is a black body. So a black body is an idealized physical object that absorbs all the electromagnetic radiation like the light, heat, etc. that falls on it regardless of wavelength or the angle of incidence. It reflects no light, hence the name black body. Now here are some important characteristics of a black body. A black body is a perfect absorber and a perfect emitter. Since it's a perfect absorber, so we can say that it absorbs 100% of the incoming radiation, nothing is reflected or transmitted. And since it is a perfect emitter, it emits the maximum possible radiation at every wavelength for a given temperature. So now let's understand Wayne's displacement law with the help of this very simple and interesting activity. Let's say I have a black body and I'm increasing the temperature of this black body. So what would happen? It will start emitting some radiations. Let's say it is emitting white light. Now, the moment if I pass this white light onto a prism, dispersion will happen and this white light would split into multiple colors. Now, it would split into multiple colors in such a way that the color with the maximum wavelength, in this case, the red color has the maximum wavelength, would deviate the least. So from this particular side, it is deviating the least and the color with the least wavelength, in this case, violet, would deviate the most. In this case, the colors that would be deviated would not be of the same intensity. So in order to measure the intensity, let's say we have a detector over here that can detect the intensity of this incoming radiation. And once we know the intensity of incoming radiation, we can also find out the energy of the incoming radiation. Now, if we move the detector in this direction, we can find the energy of all these particular wavelengths. Now, if we plot a graph between the wavelengths, that is lambda, and the energy, we would see that the graph would look something like this. Now we can note that corresponding to the maximum energy, we can note down the wavelength and we can call this as lambda m, that is the wavelength corresponding to the maximum energy. So this would be the sort of color that would be visible to us because it will overshadow all the other colors because it has the most energy. Let's say the graph was plotted, this entire thing was done when the temperature of the black body was T1. So I can write here that this particular graph is corresponding to T1 temperature. So means when the temperature of the black body was T1, then the wavelength corresponding to the maximum energy is lambda m. Let's see what would happen if we increase the temperature of the black body. Let's say if we increase the temperature to T2, the graph would look something like this. So this is for T2. And we can say that T2 is greater than T1. Now, let's see lambda m corresponding to T2. So from this graph, you can clearly see that lambda m in this case is lesser. Now, if you further increase the temperature, the graph would become something like this. This is T3. So T3 is even greater than T2. So if we try to find out lambda m for this particular situation, we would see that lambda m corresponding to the T3 temperature is even lesser. So from this graph, we can clearly see that the temperature is inversely proportional to lambda m. So as the temperature is increasing, the lambda m is decreasing. So let's say if the temperature of the black body is T1, it is appearing red to us. It is glowing red. Now, as you increase the temperature, let's say if the temperature becomes T2 in such a way that T2 is greater than T1, the body becomes yellow in color. And we know that the lambda of yellow is lesser than the lambda of red light. So we can say that as we increase the temperature, lambda M decreased. So we can summarize it over here that the temperature is inversely proportional to lambda M. By cross multiplying, we can say 
that the temperature times lambda m is a constant. This is what is called Wien's displacement law and the value of this constant comes out to be 2.9 times 10 raised to the power negative 3 and the units would be so the unit of temperature is Kelvin and lambda is measured in meters so I can say that meter Kelvin and this constant is what is called Wien's constant. Now this Wien's constant is also represented with small b and thus the equation can be rearranged as T times lambda m equals to small b. And this is what is called Wien's displacement law. Let's understand one of the most important applications of Wien's displacement law in which we can actually find the effective temperature of any celestial body. For an example, we want to find the effective temperature of sun. Given that the wavelength of maximum energy in the solar spectrum is 475 nanometer. So the lambda m in this situation is given to us as 475 nanometer. So we can write this as 475 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 meters. And the wind's constant is this much. So the value of b is 2.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter Kelvin. So we can clearly use Wayne's displacement law that says T times lambda m equals to constant that is b. So T would be equal to b divided by lambda m that would be equal to 2.9 times 10 raised to the power negative 3 divided by 475 times 10 raised to the power negative 9 and if we write the units as well so this is meter kelvin and this is meter meter and meter will get cancelled and the answer of temperature would be in kelvin so after solving this we will get the temperature nearly equal to 6101 kelvin and so with the help of wind's displacement law we have now found out the temperature on the surface of sun so i hope you are now familiar with what is wind's displacement law and what is its most important application see you in the next video till then bye bye